Welcome everyone, in this video we are going to derive formulas for the final velocities of two objects after an elastic collision. So, let me draw the setup for you. We have our platform like this and we have our first block which is called M1, which is its mass actually. And then we have another block with mass M2. Now, these are moving towards each other like this. Or they can be moving in opposite directions. It doesn't matter for our proof. This velocity is V1 and the other is V2. Now, here I am referring to the vectors even though I don't put arrows. So V2 is not the magnitude of the velocity. It is the velocity itself. Okay? You can think of it as having a vector, but I don't put it. I don't put the arrow. arrow just to keep it short. So, this is an... Elastic collision, let's say. So we have an elastic collision. Collision. Well, what does elastic mean here? Elastic means by definition that the kinetic energy before the collision is going to be equal to the kinetic energy after the collision. And by kinetic energy, I mean the total kinetic energy of the system consisting of two blocks. So, for any collision, by the way, we will have, for any collision, we will have the momentum conserved. So, P initial is going to be equal to P final. And P is the notation, the symbol for momentum. And momentum is defined as mass times the velocity. And it is a vector, like this. So, as I said, for any collision, for elastic, totally inelastic, and inelastic collisions, momentum is conserved. So, this is going to be telling us that M1 V1 plus M2 V2. So, this is the momentum of the first object before the collision. This is the momentum of the second object after the collision. This is equal to M1 V1 prime plus m2 v2 prime and velocity prime here means the final velocity the velocity after the collision which is what we are trying to find we are trying to derive two formulas one for v1 prime and one for v2 prime so these guys are the ones that we're interested in let's keep that in mind so great this is uh, what the conservation of momentum is going to give us. And this is all great. But we need another equation. I mean, how do I know that we need another equation? I know that because we have one equation but two unknowns. We cannot solve this kind of a system. We need at least another equation. And the other equation is going to come from the fact that we are dealing with an elastic collision. So the kinetic energy initial is going to be equal to the kinetic energy final. And let me write it here, perhaps kinetic energy is not a vector and it is defined as 1 over 2 mv squared. So mass times the square root of velocity divided by 2 is the definition of kinetic energy. Well, then we're going to have the kinetic energy of the first object before the collision. And for the second object, a very similar formula, of course. And now the kinetic energies after the collision. And put the M1 there. M2, V2, prime squared. Great. And of course, here we can simplify the 1 over 2s. Just like this. They are gone. Great. Now, there is one thing that I want to do with the conservation of energy equation. And you might be confused about the reason why I do that. And you will understand it uh, in the couple of minutes to come. You will understand it as we carry out the derivation. So I am going to subtract this and this from both sides. All right. This might look like an arbitrary choice, as I said, but it is going to really help us with our calculations. So if I also factor and please, uh, if you need, if you feel the need to stop the video and do the calculations yourself, please do that. We will have this, of course, continue afterwards. And then if you factor the other side, we will have this. Great. So this is the equation that we'll be interested in. This is what we get from the conservation of momentum. 
Now, if we consider, if we consider the kinetic energy equation, the conservation of kinetic energy equation, and if we subtract this and this from both sides, we're going to get, and I'm going to factor as well, we're going to get V1 squared minus V1 prime squared is equal to M2 V2 prime squared minus V2 squared. And you might be seeing where I am going with this. You might be seeing what is going to happen. And if that is the case, try to do the rest of the calculations yourself. I really encourage you to do that. So here I'm going to use the uh, use the difference of the squares formula, which is simply telling us if you have, let's write in green, a squared minus b squared. This is just a easy mathematical thing that you can check by multiplying. So this is equal to that. All right. Now I'm going to use this for this and this factors. And let's do that on the new page. So if I factor them, we, I will have m1 v1 minus v2. Oops, I did that wrong. v1 minus v1 prime, I believe. Let's check it out. Yes. And then we will have the summation. v1 plus v1 prime is equal to m2, this time v2 prime minus v2. As you can see, if you look at this. And then we are going to have v2 plus v2 prime, let's call it. It doesn't really matter, plus v2. So, if you look at this and this, you will see that we just proved that they are equal. If you look at this formula, right? I mean, compare these two. They are equal, right? We just proved that. So, these simplify. We divide by them. So this is all great. And we got an actually really interesting result. We got that V1 plus V1 prime is equal to V2 plus V2 prime. So this is telling us if you add the velocities of one object before and after the collision, it is equal to the velocities of the other object added before and after the collision. This is an equation, you know, to keep in mind if you would like because it really comes in handy in some situations. Now, using this, uh, using this formula, we are going to make a substitution. And before doing the substitution, let's just solve for one of the guys. Let's solve for V1 prime. So we will see that V1 prime is equal to V2 minus V1 plus V2 prime. Now, if we return back to our conservation of momentum equation to to this one to this one if we return to that and if we substitute for v1 prime we're going to get and i'm going to make the substitution now we have m1 v1 plus m2 v2 plus i mean is equal to m1 we would have v1 prime this case but now we're going to substitute for it so we have v2 minus m1 v1 plus m1 v2 prime and we have m2 v2 prime so i just substituted for v1 prime in the conservation of momentum equation so we will do this as follows we are going to we're going to add this guy to both sides so that we will have 2 m1 v1 And then we're going to subtract this guy and we're going to factor out the V2 so that we have M2 minus M1. And if we factor out V2 prime here, we're going to have M1 plus M2 on the denominator. And this is all going to be equal to V2 prime. And of course, feel free to check my math. You should be understanding these steps and you should be checking yourself as well as I go along. This is algebra, so I hope you are able to follow it. And if that isn't the case, please, as I said, stop the video and get a piece of paper and carry out the calculations. So this is the formula for V2 prime. 
Now, you could find uh, another formula for V1 prime, uh, similar, a similar formula, and you could just substitute it here and simplify it a bit. But I'm going to use an interesting argument here. I'm going to use a symmetry argument. This is very helpful in physics, and it goes like this. I'm going to say that V1 prime is going to be equal to I don't need to find another formula for it. I am just going to turn all the 1s in this equation to 2s and the 2s to 1s. The reason this works is because when I started this drawing, I named this guy 1 and this guy 2. But I could have switched the places. I mean, just because of my arbitrary choice, the physical result should not change. This is where the symmetry argument comes in place. So I am going to write, uh, just, like, just like I said, changing the 1s to 2s, m2, v2, plus v1, and I change the m2 to m1, the minus there is there, and then m1 is changed to m2, and the denominator stays the same, because the order of addition does not matter. Alright, so the symmetry argument, you can think of it like this. We have some green dot here, and... We have the green dot, green dot, and green dot. And it is telling us in the first term, you put the other dot, perhaps the red dot. All right. And you, when you come to the formula for the red dot, you just switch the place of the red and the, the green. This is what symmetry is giving us. And of course, if you don't feel comfortable with this, you can always derive the formula using the same steps that we just used. So this is it for this video. We derived the formulas for the, uh, the final velocities of two objects after an elastic collision. In the next videos, we are going to make some sense of this, these equations by considering the case where m1 is equal to m2 and by considering where m1 is much greater than m2 or vice versa, where m2 is much greater than m1. Anyways, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please write them in the comment section. I hope to see you in another video. Until then, take care.